Hi guys. I always still get a little nervous to um, make these. Oh, by the way, it's 2.30 in the morning. This is not unusual for me, if you know me. So, I've already talked about why I left the church, but today I wanted to talk more about the actual experience of leaving the church and what that's actually like, because I think that's where a lot of people can also relate and where there's been a lot of hardship um, and loneliness and confusion, anger, trauma, etc, etc. So I was raised in the LDS church. Um, my mom's mom was a convert to the church as a young girl at 13 in Hawaii. My sister and I are both no longer active members um, and my brother and my mom still are. Obviously, that's going to be kind of hard because you're going against your family and the way they think and the way you've been taught for your whole life, really indoctrinated. Um, you know, you go to church every Sunday for three hours. You're taught in the home. Um, when you go to high school, it's so gnarly. You go to seminary in the morning, every morning at 630 um, before high school and you're taught for an hour. Um, it's a lot of indoctrination. So there were a lot of things that were almost like affirmations um, of brainwashing, basically, that um, these answers that you know, like the back of your hand when you have doubts or when other people have doubts. Um, and so I started to leave the church when I let myself have those questions and I stopped shutting myself down um, and stopped gaslighting myself when I started to validate myself really and that's hard because your belief system that you had built for 20 however many years is now not non-existent but it's very up in the air that you don't know what is true so that was your one thing you could depend on and now the possibilities are open which is exciting but also terrifying it was hard to not constantly have a dialogue in my head wondering what other Mormons thought of me or what they were saying about me. Like I've mentioned, it's a very gossipy station of people. Um, I don't know why that is, but it's um, there's a lot of talk, especially if you leave, because it's like leaving a cult, really. I never wanted to say I was in a cult because... I didn't fully understand cults and then I started to be more fascinated with them as I was starting to leave and realize there were a lot of similarities. Um, I always thought, I was like, well, I'm not in a cult because there's like one kind of flamboyant leader that everybody like follows and worships um, or like does whatever that they say. And it's usually some type of weird man that has like kind of a weird sexual energy and like takes advantage of young girls. Um, and I just didn't realize that that was Joseph Smith, but he's dead now, so that's kind of not existing right at the forefront anymore, but that was part of the history. So once I started to accept that and think about it, then there were more things that I was like, is this cult-like? I started to think about what we did in the temple. I started to think about just certain, just how rigid it was and just weird things that we did and very controlling, demeaning things that I was not comfortable with anymore. So I didn't just get up and leave the church one day all of a sudden. It was like a gradual buildup of feeling like I needed to leave. Um, and that's really hard because I was really looking for more reasons to stay. I didn't intend when I came home from my mission to completely go the other way. I think that's every mission president's, every missionary's nightmare, if you're really into it. It's hard to feel understood at all in the world when you have such a unique experience, which is why I'm sharing these videos, because I've already in the past couple weeks connected with people that relate to me more than like my family can or friends, you know, as much as I love them. Like this is a cult basically of a very specific, of very specific things and doctrines that have so many parts that have been etched into you your entire life. So 
it's a unique experience and it's joyous to share that with other people when you're in it for certain moments um but there's a lot of it that when you come out of it you're like who would even who would even understand this other than people who have left and a lot of people who have left don't want to talk about it or they just want to get it over with and like put that in the past um for me I feel like I personally need to flesh this out and I need to talk about it for example if you were to be abused um you would need to tell somebody uh, whether it was your therapist a friend or like whatever like you wouldn't want to just like relive all those things in your mind all the time or you would at least get a journal you know and talk about it and there's so many things that are just taboo and that you're scared into never talking about as a Mormon that like even your experiences of doubt um, with the church or your just genuine questions like that's just so shunned Um, so this is me really being able to get this out and the more I repeat it and the more I say it the more I can get it out of my subconscious and get it the fuck out of there and I can just be able to be free and be separate from it and I can already feel myself really separating from the doctrine and a lot of the ways that I used to think um, and I'm grateful for that and I like almost can't remember something so this is also a way of just personal documentation of my crazy experience with the church. So honestly yeah for a while I was still pretty spooked and honestly I can tell that in some ways I still am with certain things like I'll get to it but I've barely talked to anybody about what happens in the temple um, or just certain things that happened to me or that I learned or beliefs about myself that I'm just starting to unravel them and to tell people about them. Um, But it's not encouraged. You're told that these things are sacred, they are of God, you're being trusted and you physically... And verbally make these promises called covenants, which you make in the temple. um, And you renew them every week when you go to church and you partake of the body of Christ. Like, you are not to talk about this. Um, So they keep you quiet. So sometimes when I hear anti-Mormon material, I'm still new to watching it. Um, It's not something I need to make part of my daily life but I am curious and so I watch other people's content um, and I still get this feeling like I'm not supposed to be doing that and that it's wrong and I get spooked into just feeling like this is a sin um this is of the devil and I like have to re-talk myself out of it and be like chill you're fine like you're not (laughs) in the wrong like this isn't a sin like it's okay to be open to all possibilities Um, you're not a sinner. It's fine. I still have friends in the church, um, and obviously I still have family in the church, and there's still people I love, um, but it is harder for me to relate to them. But I do appreciate the ones that still just are trying to treat me like a human being and who love me and are trying their best to, like, make sense of this. I know in their reality it's, like, very different. So I'm I'm reading from my journal (laughs) of things that I wrote down. So I'm, I've been undoing my programming, I'm realizing everything's a hoax, just look into church history, it's, it's hard to continue to participate in something um, when you are open to finding out how it came to be and things that are going on, but I think a lot of times for church members, church history with like polygamy, racism, um, a lot of really sh- like all right type of things that the leader said like in the 1800s and stuff like is just hard for people to face and they don't want to think about it so just like someone who doesn't want to think about eating meat and have it ruined for them like they'll just be like don't tell me about it And I think that's how it is a lot of times for church members, that they're comfortable with the amount of awareness that they have. Um, And they, at least for me, this was true. I did not want to know about church church history. I just didn't even want to get into it because I didn't want my faith to be shaken because that's scary. What if that's true? 
what if these things that are said about Joseph Smith or said about the Book of Mormon being historically inaccurate, like what if those are true? Then what do I do? Then you have to make a choice. And then you are more aware that there's more than one option of what to believe and that your option that you believe this whole time might not be true. And that's so lonely, so confusing. Faith crisis, crises, <laughs> faith crises are not fun. They're not something I wish upon myself. It's not something that I willingly wanted to just go right into. Um, I wanted to stay in my comfort zone, but my authentic self was calling me back to myself. Um, there were a lot of moments, I think, when I doubted things in the church, but I was just gaslit the fuck up. Like, just how many leaders told me, like, put it on the shelf, or like, don't ask that question, it'll get answered in the next lifetime, or I can't tell you the answer to that, but you can get a blessing, or you can pray so you can know that God loves you, and he'll answer your questions um, in due time. And I'm like, I'm asking you pretty, like, common sense questions why do you not have answers to this if you are a man with the priesthood who is apparently higher than me and can talk to god you have to overcome a lot of beliefs that you have that are rooted in fear of things that are going to happen to you um the first time i drank i was kind of ex i don't know i was expecting a lot of guilt because i'm a guilty person if i do something that's wrong or if I'm in a fight with someone, like, I'll feel that shit in my chest. But when I did these things that apparently I was going to be so in trouble for, nothing happened to me and I didn't feel that overwhelming sense of guilt. It just felt neutral and I just felt almost kind of mad that I was like, okay, what the hell? Could I have been doing this this whole time? Could I have had a drink when I actually turned 21? Excuse me. Um... I want to make a whole separate video about the harmful teachings of about Satan, um, but basically I had to overcome my fears of Satan and um, losing my protection by not keeping the commandments. Um, you're taught that when you do not um, follow God that you lose his protection and that the spirit can't be with you and you're led into temptation and you're kind of like at the will of Satan and his followers. Um, scary. <laughs> so, um, for people that, again, think like ex-Mormons are just like leaving the church to have fun and to sin, um, we could do that and still be in the church. Um, a lot of people do. Confuses me, but whatever you want to do. If you're actually a self-aware person and you're actually invested in what you're believing in and what you're practicing and what you're preaching to other people, um, you'll realize that in me leaving, I've forfeited an eternal family and my spot in heaven with God and Jesus at the top tier kingdom. I have abandoned my way of thinking and basically always my way of safety and protection and comfort and everything I've known, um, I've had to abandon because how can you rely on those things when you and your heart are questioning them and think they're false or feel like there could be more out there. Um, so that's scary because you're jumping into something completely new alone um, and you have a such a unique specific experience that people will maybe listen to but n few can understand. Really only people who have been in the church could really grasp this or some type of church or some type of probably Christianity um, or cult. I also served a Mormon mission in upstate New York. I was a missionary for 18 months, 19 actually. So a mission is a whole other experience that I'm still scared to talk about because there's a lot of people wrapped up in that whole situation um, and it's just, there's a lot there. So also, those are certain things that only returned missionaries who have left the church can understand. That's gnarly. Because a lot of my friends grew up in the church, 
but their families were like kind of active or like active but they're more active like in the culture than they are in like really teaching their kids the doctrine or the kids just didn't understand or just are not so just not able they weren't able to like comprehend it or they just don't understand the doctrine so a lot of my friends just like when I came home from a mission were like I don't even know what the church really even teaches and like what are what are the main points they teach people who are trying to join and that's almost like a place that I envied being in of just this ignorance is bliss state because the less you know the less harmful it is because if you're just focusing on the basics that they want you to of of Jesus plan of happiness um keep commandments God keep you safe love family joy (laughs) like that sounds great but that's not all there is. Like if you get in, if you read the scriptures, if you read the church manuals, if you listen to the prophets, that's some gnarly patriarchal (sighs) dominating shit. I ultimately have just felt really manipulated and gaslighted. And I've realized that as I've tried to unravel these belief systems and my conditioning and programming and everything, I built up the last 24 years of my life because now I'm choosing to think critically. I think you know as much as you want to know and as much as you want to ask about. And I had questions and I was tired of hearing that I wasn't going to receive them. Um, I don't think you're going to get answers to everything, but I think there are a lot of questions in Mormonism that can be answered. And once you gain those answers, or at least gain the answer that not all of this is true, you have to change or else you're going to be miserable. Um, And change is scary and you probably won't want to do this because it's going to ostracize you from your friends and your family and your comfort zone your way of life, um, the way you really have to learn to stop caring what other people think about you, um, and gain your own self-confidence in yourself and trust yourself and validate yourself. I think that truth exists and that all religions have some parts of truth, which is why you can still feel those good feelings within a religion because truth is truth but I don't I just don't believe in religion um I think that learning and experiencing life is so personal and that you kind of have your own personal gospel that you can whip up of what works for you what makes you happy what you choose to believe or how you choose to experience this life so basically when I started realizing that um I was valid and worthy in the outside world that was not as scary as I was told it was going to be. I just started the process of freeing myself. So now I'm just continuing every day to just talk to myself differently and to reaffirm new beliefs to myself that I'm learning and also just being open. You know, I'm like dabbling with spirituality and that's new for me this year. And I've just had to realize like, again and making this and I'm like okay I need to still question things I need to like think critically I need to think with my mind think with my heart like I need to not just trust things so easily um and consult with myself and see what feels best to me so cheers to healing um thanks for listening and supporting me and just more crazy shit to come as as I can get through these videos of like the building blocks of like the main things and we can get more into the fun stuff of Mormon underwear and the temple and all that good stuff. So talk to y'all on the flip side. Bye.